Abraham Lincoln did not shoot John Wilkes Booth. Titanic did not sink a North Atlantic iceberg. And Fox News is neither fair nor balanced. These are simple historical facts intelligible to all adults, most children, and some of your more discerning domesticated animals. But not, as the third story on the countdown proves yet again, not to billow. Countdown presents Fact or Fiction, wherein we catch that bastard Bill O'Reilly lying again. Oh wait, Phil, hold still. Allow me to soil myself on you. Victory is mine! <laughs> the guilty pleasure offered by the existence of Bill O'Reilly is simple and understandable. 99 times out of 100, when we belly up to the Bill O' bar of bluster, nearly every time we partake of the movable falafel feast, he serves us nothing but comedy. Farce, slapstick, unconscious self-mutilation, the sideshow bob of commentators forever stepping on the same rake, forever muttering the same grunt of inarticulate surrender, forever resuming the circle that will take him back to the same rake, the Sisyphus of morons, if you will. But this is the 100th time out of 100. It is not funny at all. Bill O'Reilly has, for the second time in just under eight months, slandered at least 84 dead American servicemen. He has turned them again from victims of the kind of atrocity our country has always fought against into perpetrators of that kind of atrocity. He has made these Americans into war criminals. They are dead and have been dead for 61 years. They cannot defend themselves against O'Reilly. We will have to do it for them. Last October, Bill O'Reilly railed against a ruling that more photos from the infamous Abu Hirab prison in Iraq might be released. His guest on his program was Wesley Clark. Clark is a retired four-star general, was for four years Supreme Allied Commander of NATO in Europe. First in his class at West Point, wounded in Vietnam, earned the Bronze Star, the Silver Star, and has streets named for him in Alabama and in Kosovo. Therefore, naturally, O'Reilly knows much more about the military than General Clark does. Clark defended the release of the additional Abu Hirab photos, saying we needed to know what happened and to correct it. O'Reilly lectured him and concluded that there had always been atrocities, even by Americans, in war. Chain General, command. you need to look at the Malmody Massacre in World War II in the 82nd Airborne. Bill was it. it was a remarkable mistake. The Belgian town of Malmody did lend its name to one of the most appalling battlefield war crimes of the 20th century. But O'Reilly's implication that the Americans committed it was entirely backwards. Americans, most of them members of Battery B of the 285th Field Artillery Observation Battalion, surrendered to German panzer troops and were then shot by their captors from the SS. Yet O'Reilly had implied that the Americans had massacred these Germans in this one stark moment of the Battle of the Bulge. And he used this Alice through the looking glass view of history to somehow rationalize Abu Hirab while trying to dress down a four-star American general. Still, it could have been a mistake. We make them, even historians do. O'Reilly had not explicitly called the Americans the war criminals of Malmedy. Our troops, too, were accused of crimes against prisoners in the Second World War. It was assumed last year he had simply made a foolish error, and though he got beaten up appropriately in some places, it was all largely dismissed as merely that, a mistake. Then came this Tuesday night. Again, O'Reilly's guest was General Wes Clark. This time the topic was the apparent murder of Iraqi civilians at Haditha. That O'Reilly was dismissive of that event should be no surprise. That he should have described as the real crime of Iraq, the events of Abu Hirab, should be no surprise to those who know of his willingness to jettison his most important beliefs of yesterday for the expediencies and the ratings of today. But that he should have brought up Malmedy again, that was a surprise. In Malmedy, as you know, U.S. forces captured SS forces who had their hands in the air and they were unarmed and they shot them down. You know that. That's on the record, been documented. Thus was the full depth of Bill O'Reilly's insult to the American dead of World War II made clear. The mistake of last October was not some innocent slip nor misremembered history. This was the way O'Reilly understood it, and thus this way it had to be. No errors corrected, no apologies offered, no stopping the relentless tide of bull, even briefly enough to check one fact. The facts of Malmedy are terrifying. As described by Michael Reynolds in his painstakingly detailed article from a 2003 issue of World War II magazine, one week before Christmas 1944, 139 U.S. soldiers, most of them from the 285th Field Artillery, encountered the German Kampfgruppe Piper, the leading formation of the German 1st SS Panzer Division, one of only two German units in the entire war which actually carried Adolf Hitler's name. The Americans were overrun. 11 of the 139 soldiers were killed in the very short Battle of Malmedy. 
Two more were killed as they tried to flee. Seven escaped. Six became prisoners of war. The other 113 Americans, nearly all of whom had surrendered outright, were ordered to assemble in an open field next to a restaurant, the Café Bodarwe. What happened next has been attributed to many things. A cold-blooded decision by that panzer unit commander, Colonel Joachim Piper, that he could not handle the prisoners, or an unjustifiable overreaction to some kind of escape attempt, or simply horrible mass murder. Within 15 minutes, the SS colonel or someone directly under him had ordered his men to shoot the unarmed American POWs. The bodies at Malmedy were not found until a month later. There were 84 of them, all American soldiers. More than half showed gunshot wounds to their heads. Six had received fatal blows to the head. Nine were found with their arms still raised above their heads. The fact that O'Reilly got these horrible facts completely backwards, twice, offended even his usually compliant viewers from his program Wednesday night. Don Caldwell, Fort Worth, Texas. Bill, you mentioned Malady as the site of an American massacre during World War II. Was the other way around the SS shot down U.S. prisoners? In the heat of the debate with General Clark, my statement wasn't clear enough, Mr. Caldwell. After Malmedy, some German captives were executed by American troops. Wrong answer. When you are that wrong, when you are defending Nazi war criminals and pinning their crimes on Americans and you get caught doing so twice, you're supposed to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, and then you're supposed to shut up for a long time. Instead, Fox washed its transcript of O'Reilly's remarks Tuesday. Its website claims O'Reilly said in Normandy, when as you heard, in fact, he said in Malmedy. The rewriting of past reporting worthy of George Orwell has now carried over into such online transcription services as Burrell's and Factiva. Whatever did or did not happen later in supposed or actual retribution, the victims at Malmedy were Americans, gunned down while surrendering by Nazis in 1944, and again Tuesday night and Wednesday night, by a false patriot who would rather be loud than right. In Malmedy, as you know, Bill O'Reilly said on the air Tuesday night in some indecipherable attempt to defend the events of Haditha, U.S. forces captured SS forces who had their hands in the air and were unarmed, and they shot them dead. You know that. That's on the record and documented. The victims at Malmedy in December 1944 were Americans. Americans with their hands in the air. Americans who were unarmed. That's on the record and documented. And their memory deserves better than Bill O'Reilly. We all do.